What's going on guys? Welcome to another edition of Rock's Garage. I'm your host Dan and on today's episode we're going to be installing part number LIFT-545 on our Yamaha drive. Now before we get started, let's take a look at what comes in our kit and the tools that we're going to need to perform installation. When you open up your kit, you're going to find your new shock towers. Now these do have three positions for camber adjustment, we'll get into that a little bit later. We have our A-arm drop bracket. We have our shock tower brace, our driver and passenger spindle, and a bag of hardware for the front. And then for the rear of the cart, we have our upper shock bracket, our sway bar relocation bracket, a bag of hardware for the rear, and a small bottle of Loctite. Now something to keep in mind is that this lift kit does also fit the Yamaha Drive 2. So this kit fits both the Yamaha Drive and the Drive 2. The installation process is pretty much the same on both carts. Now before we get started with that installation, let's take a look at the tools that we're going to need to perform it. So the tools that we need are an impact gun with a 3 quarter inch socket. We have a ratchet wrench with a 10 millimeter, a 12 millimeter, a 13 millimeter, and a 14 millimeter socket. We also have an 11 16 and a 5 8 socket. After that, we have a 12 millimeter open-ended wrench, as well as a 14 millimeter and a 5 8 ratcheting wrench. We have a 17 millimeter and a 3 quarter inch wrench. After that, we have a dead blow mallet. You can also use a rubber mallet. We have some needle nose pliers, a pry tool, and a tape measure. Now that we've taken a look at all the tools, let's go ahead and get started. Now, as always, we want to make sure we take a few safety precautions before we get started with our installation. First, we want to turn our cart off, then we want to set our parking brake, and if you have an electric cart, you're going to flip your tow run switch to the tow position. Once that's done, you can go ahead and chalk your back wheels, we're going to get the cart up in the air and secure on some jack stands. And now that our cart is in the air and secure on jack stands, we can go ahead and remove our front bumper and our front wheels. Now that we have our wheels and our front bumper removed, our next step is to remove the steering rack from the spindle. And now that we have our steering rack disconnected, we can go ahead and remove both of our hubs. And now that our hubs are off, we can go ahead and remove both of our spindles. Now that our spindles are removed, we can go ahead and remove both of our shocks. Now that our front shocks are removed, we can go ahead and remove both of our front A-arms. Now we have the front end of our cart disassembled, we're going to go ahead and put our A-arm drop bracket in place. We're just going to hand tighten it at this point. Now that our A-arm drop assembly is in place, our next step is to install our shock towers. Now, the shock towers you'll notice will have a cutaway on one side. That's going to face the outside of the cart. So we're just going to put this where the old shock's mounted, and then we'll put the cross brace across the top. Now that our shock towers are loosely installed, our next step is to install both of our A-arms. Now we're going to use the supplied hardware and we're just going to loosely install those. So now that our A-arms are loosely installed, our next step is to reinstall our OE shocks. Now, on the upper shock mount, there are three different camber positions. We're going to use the one in the middle for now, and if we need to adjust our camber later on, we'll go ahead and do that. Now you'll notice in your hardware pack, there are two small black spacers. Those are gonna go at the top of your shock when you mount that on the shock mount. Those are gonna go in front of the shock to help space everything out properly. Now that our shocks are installed, we're gonna go ahead and install our new spindles. Now, the spindles will come with some spacers zip tied to them. You may or may not need all of them depending on the wear that is on your cart.
Now that our spindles are installed, our next step is to attach our steering rack to those spindles. Now, before we do that, we want to make sure that our steering wheel is centered so that when we go to do our alignment, everything is even on both sides. Now that our steering rack is attached to our spindles, our next step is to reinstall our hubs onto those spindles. Now that our hubs are on, we can go back through the whole front end and tighten everything down. So now before we go ahead and tighten down all of our hardware, we're going to add some of the included thread locking compound to the bolts and then put the nuts on. We're going to do that to all four bolts on the front end. Before we tighten down the hardware for the upper shock mount, we're just going to add a little bit more of our thread locking compound to these bolts. Once that's done, we can go ahead and reinstall our wheels and tires and flip the car around and begin working on the back. Now we've got our cart flipped around, we can go ahead and turn our cart back off, set our parking brake, and if we have an electric cart, we're going to flip our tow run switch to tow. And if you have an electric cart, you're going to want to make sure that you disconnect your battery pack from your motor and your controller so that you don't short circuit any electrical components. After that's done, we can make sure we chalk our front wheels and then we can get the cart up in the air and secure it on some jack stands. So now that we have our cart up in the air and secured on some jack stands, we're going to go ahead and take our wheels off and remove our access panel. So as I was removing my access panel, I noticed that my seat box kit was going to be in the way. So I'm just going to take the time to remove that now so that I can access my upper shock bolts a little better and you guys can see better. And now that we have easy access to everything, we're going to take our jack and place it under the rear axle to support the weight of it. Now that the weight of our rear axle is supported, our next step is to remove our two upper shock bolts and our connecting rod. And now that we've removed those three bolts, we can go ahead and drop the rear axle down so we can make some room for our new drop bracket. Now when we're installing this new drop bracket, we want to make sure that the slope of the bracket goes towards the rear of the cart. Now that we have our drop bracket installed in the rear, we can go ahead and install our new connecting rod bracket. Now, for us, we already have a seat kit installed on this cart, so the hole that would need to be drilled for that bracket has already been done. But in order to do that, all you would need to do is drill that hole out to accommodate the new hardware. But if you also have a seat kit, we included another bolt so that you could have matching hardware in your bag well. Now that everything is loosely installed, we're going to go back through the whole kit and tighten everything down. Now that all of our hardware is tightened down, we can go ahead and reinstall our access panel. Once that's done, we can jack the cart up a little bit more and put our wheels and tires on. Now that we have our cart flipped back around, we're going to go ahead and perform our front end alignment. Now, something to make note of on Yamaha carts in particular is that the camper that comes from the factory typically has a lot of positive camber to it. 
So when we're setting our camera, that's something we want to keep in mind. We want to generally stay in the same kind of specifications as the factory. Now, on a Yamaha cart, because it has an independent front suspension, when the cart is loaded, as in if there's passengers or something on the cart, the cart does level itself back out. So looking at your camber without anything on the cart is not an accurate way to judge where your camera sits. Now when we're adjusting our toe, we want to make sure that we have between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch toe in, which means the front of our tires are sixteenth to an eighth of an inch closer than the rear of our tires. Now before we make any adjustments, we want to make sure that we center our steering wheel. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and break up a tape measure and start measuring our wheels. So in order to make sure that our steering rack is centered, we're going to go ahead and turn our steering wheel all the way to the driver's side. After that, we're going to rotate the wheel all the way to the passenger side and count how many rotations it takes to get all the way to the passenger side. So I'm going to take that number, cut it in half, and rotate the steering wheel back to that number, and then we'll be centered. Then after that's done, we can go ahead and start making the adjustments on the steering rack. So again, we're going to just measure the difference between the front and the rear of our tires, and we're going to make sure that the difference between the front and the back is 1 8 to 1 16 of an inch toe in in the front. So we're going to go ahead and release the jam nuts on the tie rod ends and begin making adjustments and measuring with our tape measure. Then once all your adjustments are made, you can go ahead and lock down those jam nuts on both of the tie rod ends. Typically when you make your toe adjustment, you want to even out the adjustment on both sides of the steering rack. Because of the way that the cart came in the shop, we only had to adjust the passenger side because the driver's side was already where it needed to be. That's not typical, but you want to make sure that you measure based on the centering of your steering rack like I showed you earlier, and then make your adjustments based on that. Now that our toe and our camber is set, we can go ahead and reinstall our front bumper. Once that's done, we can go back through the entire kit and double check and make sure everything is tightened down, and we can replace any counter pins or remove during the installation process. Once that's done, that'll complete the installation for part number LIFT-545 on our Yamaha Drive. Thanks for watching this episode of Rock's Garage, and I'll see you next time.